In this session we will look at what happens when there is more than one limiting factor and how we can make the best use of the limited resources that we have to ensure we continue to maximise profits. The process we are going to use to do this is called linear programming. As with limiting factor analysis we are always going to assume that the main objective of any business is to maximise profit for the purposes of our calculations. For more information on limiting factor analysis please see the separate video covering this area. There are a number of steps we need to go through to calculate the maximum profit or contribution that can be generated when there is more than one limiting factor. The first step is to define the variables. We then need to understand our constraints and turn this information into formulae. We will also turn our objective of maximising contribution into a formula. Once we have our various formulae we can then produce a graph and from this identify a feasible region which is the area of the graph within which we meet all of the various constraints. Within this feasible region will be the optimal production plan which is what we are aiming for. Once we know our optimal production plan we can then calculate the maximum contribution we can generate in much the same way as we do when performing limiting factor analysis. We will use the remainder of this video to demonstrate this process with an example. Alphabet Limited makes two products, the Frank and the Greeter. Each Frank generates contribution of $5 and takes 10 labour hours to make and 4 kilograms of material L. Each Greeter generates $7 of contribution, uses 5 labour hours and 6 kilograms of material L. Alphabet wants to maximise contribution, but there is a limited number of labour hours and also a limited amount of material L available, so they cannot meet maximum demand for both Frank and Greta. They have 1,000 labour hours per week and 800 kilograms of material L available. Alphabet Limited wants to be able to make more Greta's than Frank's, as the demand for Greta's is usually higher. So step one is to define our variables. Let us say that F is the number of units of product franc and G is the number of units of product greta. We will also use C to represent total contribution. Based on this data we can start to put together some formulae to stipulate the various constraints. So with regards to labour hours we know that each franc takes 10 hours and each greta takes 5 hours and that we have a maximum of 1000 hours available. This generates the formula 10F plus 5G needs to be less than or equal to 1000 hours. Moving on to material L. A franc uses 4 kilograms of material L and a greeter uses 6 kilograms of L and we have 8 kilograms of this material available for use. The formula to describe this is therefore 4F plus 6G needs to be less than or equal to 800 kilograms. We also need to ensure that we make at least one franc and one greta as the company wants to make some of each. The formula that covers this is F comma G needs to be at least zero. With regards to demand, Alphabet want to make more greters than francs so we can define this formula as G being greater than F. And finally we can state the objective function, which is to maximise contribution. This formula is based on the contribution that each unit of franc and greta can generate, and therefore it becomes C equals 5F plus 7G. Now we need to draw a graph with number of units of franc and greta on the two axes of the graph. To plot the graph we need to perform some workings using the formulae that we have just put together. Let's look at the formula for labour. This is 10F plus 5G is equal to or less than 1000 hours. We hope to use the full 1000 hours so we can turn this formula into 10F plus 5G equals 1000 hours. For the purposes of plotting the line on the graph we are firstly going to assume that we make no francs. So this means that the formula becomes 5G equals 1000 and therefore G is 200 units. We can follow the same principle by assuming that we will not make any greeters. This time the formula becomes 10F equals 1000 hours 
and therefore if we don't make any greeters we can make 100 francs. We also follow the same idea with regards to material L. The formula that we produced was to state that 4F plus 6G needs to be less than or equal to 800 kilograms. Again we are going to assume that we use the full 800 kilograms and turn the formula into 4F plus 6G equals 800 kilograms. If we assume we don't make any francs, the formula becomes 6G equals 800 kilograms and therefore G is 133 units of product greeter. Assuming we don't make any greeters, the formula becomes 4F equals 800 kilograms and we would therefore make 200 units of franc. So now we have some parameters to put on the graph. We need to plot these points on the graph. For labour, we can mark a point on the g-axis at 200 units and a point on the f-axis at 100 units and then join the dots together to give the labour constraint line. We can do the same with material L and mark a point on the g-axis at 133 units and on the f-axis at 200 units and join these together. This is the constraint line for material L. We can also plot the demand line on here as F equals G. We need to ensure that we make more greeters than francs, so anything below this line is within this constraint. Now that we have the constraint lines on the graph, we can determine the feasible region. As already mentioned, we need to be to the right of the demand line as we need to make more greeters than francs. We also need to be below the constraint lines for material L and for labour as we cannot use more of the resource than we have. This gives us the feasible region, as highlighted in bold, of 0, A, B and D. Given the constraints we have, we can make any combination of volumes of francs and greeters within this region, but we want to maximise contribution, so we now need to add a further line to this graph, the contribution line. We need to work out the angle of this contribution line and the easiest way to do this is to follow a similar process to the labour and material constraint lines. But this time we don't have a contribution figure, so the first thing we need to do is work one out. We are going to use the contribution formula of C equals 5F plus 7G together with information gained from our graph. If we look at point D of the feasible region, F is 0 and G is 133. Using these unit volumes in the contribution formula gives us C equals $5 multiplied by 0 francs plus $7 multiplied by 133 greeters, totaling $931 of contribution. We can then use the contribution formula, this time assuming that G is 0, to find how many francs would also generate $931 of contribution. So $931 equals 5F plus 7G, but as G is 0, this becomes $931 equals 5F, and therefore F must be 186 units. We can now plot a line on the graph where the point on the F axis is 186 units, and the point on the G axis is 133 units. This is the contribution line. Once we have plotted this line, we need to effectively slide the line up across the graph until we reach the furthest point within the feasible region. By moving the line up and to the right, we will ensure that we maximise the contribution generated, as we are making the maximum number of products. In this case, the last point we hit within the feasible region is product B, so generating the quantities at this point will maximise contribution. We call this the optimum point of production. We now need to look at point B and determine how many units of franc and greeter are recorded at this point. By tracking back to the F and G axes, we can see that this leads to an optimal production plan of 50 francs and 90 greeters. Now that we know the optimal production quantities, we can work out the maximum contribution that can be generated using the contribution formula. The maximum contribution that can be generated given the constraints within the scenario is $880, calculated as $5 multiplied by 50 units of franc 
and $7 multiplied by 90 units of greta.